Yeah, hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering if I'm going to be able to have a healthy relationship having the kind of sex that I like. Which is? Um, well, my current guy that I'm seeing, which is my ex-boyfriend, you know, he cuts me or spits in my mouth, pees on me. Jennifer, 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 Jennifer. First of all, this you have to video and send to us. <laughs> you have to. Hey, Jennifer, I, um, I, I'm concerned about girls who like to watch that degrading of, of sex, let alone engage in it. No, but now, what it is. But, it's but degrading, what, Dr. But what, oh, yeah. what happened to, um, I mean, uh, there's fun and there's kinky sex, and then there's stuff that uh, is, um, like they're saying, degrading. Now, why, I mean, what, 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 what's going on in your past that has led you to this, or do you think? Okay, oh my gosh, okay, I was molested when I was little, but it wasn't like a big deal, but yeah, I'm a sex addict now, I'm bipolar. Okay, Jennifer, there's no such thing as sexual abuse that isn't a big deal. However, every, well, most abuse survivors will tell you it's no big deal, I dealt with it, it was nothing, but it actually shatters your brain's regulatory system. Yeah, well, it made me a little sweaty, yeah. Well, it causes sexual addiction. That's what yeah, it's just you, you end up doing this repeating behavior. I can yeah. take it from your doctor. Go. Now, <laughs> Go, you you're repeating it. the same behavior as a way to kind of say that there was nothing wrong that happened. And this is it's, you, you spin out, and then it gets crazier and crazier until you're not really dealing with what the real problem is, which is... Doctor? Somebody's peeing in your mouth. <laughs> That's the real problem. Yeah. No, it gets crazier and crazier, and then you're going to do other crazy stuff. And then, you know, if he's strangling you till you pass out, I mean... How much crazier can that get? So yeah, um, well, I, mean, I know. I'm like, I know, you know, people think it's weird, and yeah, I've got scars from getting cut. And so, so Jennifer, you're that. not, you're not. Let's, let's just get straight to the. I get up. Cut to the chase. Therapy. You're not ready to deal with your sexual addiction. Is that right? I, well, I'm in SAA, but I mean, I'm in Bakersfield. Everyone in SAA here is old and porn addicted, and that's not my problem. Right. Are no, you, but are yeah, you listen, in? I get the same. BS excuse from uh, kids, you know, that want to get clean, and they say, "Oh, when I go to a meeting." It's nothing but a bunch of booze hounds, and I'm not even a drinker. And it, you know, it's all the same thing, though, Jennifer. I mean, it's all someone trying to deal with earlier problems and compensate with it in a in a in a sexual way. They manifest with sexual problems, Jennifer. Well, one of the the roles of recovery is to look for the similarities, not the differences. And when you look, you look the differences. Of course, you'll find them and find reason not to be there. But look, you haven't dealt with your sexual addiction at all. Not at all, because of course you haven't. You don't have a sponsor. You're not doing steps. You identify. No one else, I mean, it's all men. They can't sponsor me. You're right, but you'll find a woman. Go to some SLAA meetings, and you'll find women there, and uh, get a sponsor and start working the program. And they, they will put you on a moratorium about sex. You will not be allowed to have sex or masturbate or anything for quite a while. Yeah. And, no. And that, yeah. and that will make that. Then feelings will emerge that you've been avoiding with all this sexuality, and. That will be processed then in the recovery in the, in the work with your but the only way with your sponsor. You have to cut it out. You got to go cold turkey. As tough as that sounds, you're never going to get to what's really going on unless you do that. Uh, I, guys, I, I watched what? Dr. Drew's show, and that's what happens. Thank you. What Thank happens you. to the spitting boyfriend and the cutting boyfriend when Jennifer moves on? Doesn't he just move on? To He's got to find another, yeah. another victim. <laughs> I mean, why don't we well, just like, like, like get to. Jennifer to bear down with him and then just keep the problem contained at least? Right? No, it doesn't no. Matter. She's got. She can't continue. It's like killing the mob boss. There's always gonna be another one. No, 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 no. no. She's got to figure it out. I'm stuck with boring sex for the rest of my life. No, you're not. No. What you're gonna be? You have to figure out what's underneath all this stuff, and then you can. You're gonna have a real. You you can have a real relationship with intimacy and uh, people that care about you, not just people spitting and peeing on you, choking you. That sounds like a real nice balanced relationship. What do you do after that? Let's go see a movie. I got something to eat, honey. But yeah, I don't know. Would you just spit and pee in my mouth? Jennifer, take a shower after that. Yeah, yeah. This way, Jennifer. You have a. You have any kids? Yes. Okay. I have a three and a half year old son. Oh, yeah. Well, you have a three and a half year old son. He's never around the boyfriend, don't Time out. No, no, I'm not pointing fingers. Hello. Woo! 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 Yes. Okay. What would you do if someone came along, urinated on him, cut him, and spit in his mouth? Or what if you found out he was doing that to girls? And by the way, it's not that he witnesses it. He's with the mom. He's intimately involved with the mom who does that does stuff. That. And your breath smells like pee. No, it's not that. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's the, just... All that pain and all that misery that's underlying all that crazy behavior is absorbed by him. He knows it. He feels it. He touches it every day. Even wow, though you think you're completely hiding it, he lives in it. So... Yeah, guilt will make this better. That's not guilt. That's no. just a fact. That's just how it works. I, well, I mean, I feel guilty for it. You know, like I said, I'm bipolar and I take the medications, but it's, Good. you know, it's still hard to parent. <laughs>
Yeah, it's sure. Hard to learn. You've been a trauma survivor, but doing it this way is going to make it worse for your child. Uh, you got to deal with the small pain of, uh, of of not having sex right now and not doing this crazy, kinky sexual behavior, which is, is not healthy. You got to go through that withdrawal thing to get to a, a more normal place. And I say normal, say place of uh, behavior to understand where this is coming from so you can have more of a real relationship right that that doesn't have to be so crazy out there to you because you're feeling dead you need, and you need something crazy so you feel like you're feeling something and when you find that it'll be, it'll be more valuable and it'll be more worthwhile than yeah. the sexual pleasure you're yeah, yeah, right yeah. now it takes Tyler. a picture <laughs> yeah what's up and by the way Anderson, what's the big deal we, we have to kill all drug suppliers before we treat any drug addicts is that the point I'm just saying there's always another one and there's always another addict but it's, 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 like, it's going to go find a Jennifer there's only 14 next time so Tyler you need to, well, no 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 what's going the on? war on drugs yeah, what's yeah, with right. Tyler over here what's going on Tyler um, alright so I'm 17 years old yeah. and I just had with my girlfriend and I haven't actually had an erection in about 15 days uh, that's not possible <laughs> First of all, you're 17. You can go through a wall at 17. But I'm confused. You, you, you think it has it's something to do with it? You think it's I don't know. Last, like, I don't, it just hasn't happened. But I hear somebody laughing in the background. Are you, are I'm not you buy super depressed, dude? No. Are, are you, you taking any drugs? No. Were you a virgin uh, before? Were you a virgin before this? Uh, no. Why, why do you associate this with recently having had sex with your girlfriend? I don't, I don't know. It just, I just haven't. Last couple of weeks, I'm bogus. No, but was there something about that experience that we should know? Um, no. Okay. I I mean, like a couple, I don't know, hours ago. I thought it was weird that I didn't have an erection. I couldn't get an erection. Well, it could be psychosomatic. Medication? No, no. I said no medicine. No medicines. No drugs. No medicine. Be clean and sober. Wow. Or it'd be boring. I don't buy it. Um, there are. Of course, medical conditions, prolactin secreting pituitary tumors. He's 17. Come yeah, on. Yeah, that's when that comes on. What? Yeah, absolutely. It's called prolactinomas, and they suppress testosterone. Oh, yeah. You don't believe they're prolactinomas? No. <laughs> <laughs> they, Ken Baker had one, and he talked. He wrote a book called Man Made about what it felt like. To, he he actually never developed any real sexual drive, and then they took it. They did surgery and took it out when he was like 22. And he talks about the testosterone. This is not what he's talking about. Though. This, this is a joke. I definitely. Have sexual drive. I just can't. But, yeah, but you lost it. Direction. I see. So no, no, I still have the drive. Well, the other thing. Listen, it, it, when a, when a male has a significant change in their sexual responsiveness, you have to think medical because tumors in the spinal column, column will cause a change in erectile function. Tumors. Oh, let me ask a question. Can I interrupt here, Doctor? Did, you, ha Schneider, did, did right? you have sex with her like 80 times? Or so you come like 50. <laughs> How many orgasms <laughs> did you have though? Because maybe you're still recovering. No, like the last couple, I don't know, like month or so, I guess I haven't been doing as much for as she wishes. So, so you've had a drop, a gradual yeah. drop in your sexual desire, and then erectile right. You needed a medical violation, Tyler. There's a lot of different conditions that can do this. That's the only thing. Things. That's the only thing that can save you now, man. Is you got to go get yourself checked out, okay? All right. All right. Okay. Hey, now on June 25th. Yeah. You got yourself a star-studded comedy with Adam Sandler. Yeah. Kevin James. He's Chris good. Rock. He's Chris good. Rock. He's good. David Spade. Of course, he's funny. And our guest tonight, Mr. Rob Schneider. It's called Grown Ups. That's a uh, that's like a murderer's row of uh, comedic it's, actors right it's there. It's a good group of guys who have enough cash. <laughs> they can, they're doing okay. Feet in a pool. It's uh, it, it's a fun week, but these guys get together um, 30 years after their their little Catholic youth league won that little championship, and they get back together because the coach dies, and basically they still have the same problems they had when they were like 11. And uh, it's um, it's a fun movie. It's Selma Hayek. Of course, Adam Sandler wrote it, so he's married to Selma Hayek in the movie. Oh. And I'm married to the 74-year-old grandmother of 14. <laughs> She's a lovely actress, uh, Joyce Van Patten. Very funny town lady. But uh, it's a fun movie, and, um, uh, you know, Kevin James is great in it. And uh, Chris Rock was fun to work with every day, coming to set, coming up with jokes and things. So uh, I started doing stand-up after, you know, talking with him every morning. Hmm. It is funny how, uh, thinking about... Adam Sandler's movies that he makes for himself. He, I, I think he's been uh, opposite Kate Beckinsale. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> now suck. Now Salma Hayek. That doesn't suck either. Uh, who's the girl who was on Scrubs? That was uh, his love interest in Adam and uh, Happy Gilmore. Okay, and, uh, that was early on. Yeah, and then he got uh, Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. So he really does. Drew uh, Barrymore, like you know, 13 years ago. He really does like to talking like a. 24 year old to stretch that suspension of belief <laughs> when it comes to his romantic interest. Yeah, well, hey, God love him. 
Greg, Bowen, and uh, and we'll. we'll